Our next two scenarios both occurred in the climb at flight level 100 and here we are looking at level busts. Scenario 2 is an Airbus 319 en route from Gatwick to Nice and has been cleared to flight level 100. The captain is pilot flying and both are competent experienced pilots very familiar with the route and with the aircraft type. The pilot monitoring receives and acknowledges a heading change onto 180. He then receives a frequency change for the next sector, which he records and actions. What he doesn't notice because he is not monitoring the captain's actions is that the captain has selected a flight level change of 180. They end up in a situation where they are climbing in a sector without any contact with the sector ATC and they deviate by 700 feet. Stephen, looking at the profile, are you happy with 370 for cruise if we get that? Yeah, 370 is pretty close to the optimum, is it? So okay. I'll do nicely, thank okay. you. Speed out, star. Check. Alt. Signal 246, flight level 100. Signal 246, roger, turn right, heading 180 degrees. Turn right, heading 180, signal 246. And signal 246, contact London, 127, that's 450. London, 127, 450, signal 246. Push on and climb 180. Climbing control, signet 246. Signet 246, continuous clear. Signet 246. Okay, Let's see where we can get for a cruise out here. That looks good. Steve, they asked for a Right turn heading 180. Oh, I thought it was climb 180. No, turn right 180. Right. Maintain flight level 100. Okay, so autopilot's out. Set 100 in the window. Set 100. Pull home descent. 100. Open descent. And give me a right turn under heading of 180 degrees. Right 180. Pull heading. We don't really know why this error occurred, but because the two controls are not adjacent, it is unlikely to be an inadvertent selection. It is more likely that he was mentally tuned for a flight level change and went into automatic mode to carry out a task that he does routinely and frequently. He definitely listened to the ATC instruction and wrote it down, but he didn't register it as a heading change. It is also possible that the pilot monitoring looked up at the display and saw 180 but did not register as a flight level change. There is a tendency to be over-trusting in well-trained pilots who rarely make mistakes and highly integrated, highly automated systems that rarely fail. Humans are inherently poor at monitoring for infrequent events and therefore discipline and diligence is required to ensure that all flight path changes are monitored. In the next three scenarios, Captain Simon Wood is acting as a facilitator to stimulate discussion on the monitoring issues. In this scenario, the pilot flying set a flight level of 180 instead of a heading of 180. So how could the crew have avoided this situation? This situation could have been avoided by using the SOPs and the correct radio phraseology. Signal 246, roger, uh, turn right heading 180 degrees. Turn right heading 180, signal 246. If pilot monitoring responded using 180 degrees, then this would have helped reinforce the turn rather than the climb. Similarly, if the PF had read the FMA more accurately, i.e. thrust climb, open climb, 180 blue, then this would have alerted the PM to the incorrect mode and target. When the pilot monitoring changed frequencies, what terms did he use? He just checked in with his call sign and failed to confirm his clearance on initial contact. Climb and control, signet 246. Signet 246, continuous clear. Signet 246. By reiterating his clearance to maintain flight level 100 and turn right onto heading 180 degrees, 
This would have clarified the targets in the mind of the PF. Scenario 3 is also an Airbus A319 en route from Heathrow to Glasgow. They are currently at flight level 100 and are cleared to flight level 150. The pilot flying correctly sets the flight level and decides to select vertical speed. But just as he is about to select it, a fault is displayed on the ECAM. He then inadvertently selects a negative vertical speed of minus 1500, which goes unnoticed when they are both distracted by the fault. Climb flight level 150. Cuba 532, climb flight level 150. 150, Saint. Uh, yep. Yeah. Gotta do this with BS. Okay. Oh. No, what's that then? Gen 2 fault. That's a master caution. Um. Okay, yeah, Gen 2 fault. So, you can access by radio. Your radio. Okay, happy with this. Elect Gen 2 fault. Gen 2 off, then on. And further if unsuccessful. Alright. Yep. So we come up here, there's the Gen 2. Confirm. Off. Off. Give it a few seconds to reset. Yeah. Back in again. Doesn't appear to have cleared. No, so we'll Ready take it off. In successful generator fault. That's the one. That's now select to off. Elect Gen 2 fault. Yeah, okay. uh, Steve, we're descending. It was a climb 150. Oh, so, I'll take the old part out. Check. Set, uh, pull open climb. Open climb 150. Thrust climb, open climb. Okay. Probably better tell him. Cuba 532, confirm your climbing part of a 150. Cuba 532, sorry, we're at 9 at 1, now climbing, confirm clearance climb flight level 150. Still clear, climb flight level 150, Puma 2. Climb flight level 150, Puma 9, 532. Yeah, climb 150. Okay, up to. This is a classic situation whereby both pilots are distracted by a system fault and both go head down to sort it out. Attention tunnelling or coning is quite a common event and took the pilot flying away from his number one task of flying the aircraft. This resulted in a level bust of 900 feet. In situations like this, attention switching techniques, commonly known as multitasking, need to be applied. In this scenario, the pilot inadvertently set a descent mode when he was cleared to climb and this went unnoticed because the crew were distracted by a system fault. How could they have managed this interruption to ensure that the error was captured? If they had allocated the task more clearly, with the PF maintaining responsibility for the flight path and the PM system management while still monitoring the flight path, at one point both pilots were looking at the overhead panel and concentrating on the abnormal procedure. So how could pilots prioritise in this situation? The crew needed to multitask to ensure the PF concentrates primarily on the flight path while monitoring the PM's actions as the technical procedure is carried out. Similarly, the PM should concentrate on executing the technical procedure while occasionally monitoring the flight path. Okay, that's an like Gen 2 fault. Generator 2 off, then on. Steve, we're going down. occurred in the hold at Lambourne and was an airprox between a Boeing 747 and a Fokker aircraft. For the purpose of this training DVD we have replaced the Boeing with an Airbus. They are on an overnight sector from Delhi to Heathrow and have been given a clearance of flight level 100 which the pilot monitoring correctly acknowledges 
but he then selects flight level 90, which neither crew notice. What we are looking at here is the impact of tiredness on the monitoring task, where arousal levels are low. Chester 823, descend flight level 100. Descend flight level 100, Chester 823. Okay, so I think I'm going to fly this down, so I'm going to take all parts out. Okay. Uh, flight directors off, please. Flight directors are going off the side. And if you set the target altitude, okay, please. Okay, down to... Chester 823, contact uh, on the approach. Uh, 119, that's for 725. Uh, he's our approach, 119725, uh, Chester 823. Approach Chester 823. We're now bus direct landborne information delta. 823, Roger. Landborne to hold, uh, 5 to 10 minutes. 5 to 10, thank you. Chester 823. Can you give me the bird, please? Certainly, bird coming on. So, bird on, but overhead, starting the start watch. Give me left on to a heading of 089. Left 089. It seems pretty quiet. Nobody else seems to be in the stack. Oh no, it's always the way that he's with it. It could be dead quiet. You still get a 10 minute delay. It's, it's the last thing we need. Alright. I think I'm feeling quite weary now. Sorry, it should have said thousand ago. Yep, check. Traffic, oh, traffic, 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 traffic,
However, with the autopilot engaged, the PF would set the targets and monitor the flight path, which would leave the PM with increased capacity to monitor his actions and the flight path whilst responding to ATC. So how could the crew have distributed the workload better? 